Hi, and welcome to the screencast about binary trees. Binary trees are extremely useful objects in computer science because they are a kind of simple data structure that can be used for lots of things like search algorithms, parsing natural language statements, or evaluating mathematical expressions. In this video, we're going to present and unpack a considerable amount of terminology about binary trees so that we can speak more clearly about applications and results later. So let's first take a look at this tree that has 13 vertices labeled A through M. We've already discussed roots of trees, and I'd like to think of A up on the top here as being the root of this tree. You can think of this tree as something like a family tree. A, the root, is like the matriarch or patriarch of this family, and this tree shows four generations of family members. And in fact, the first level of terminology to introduce puts these other vertices in relation to each other, quite literally, using genealogical terms. So let's first look at vertex B here on the left. We're going to say that A is the parent of B, and that B is a child of A. This is because if we think of this tree as having directed edges that flow outward from the root, there's exactly one directed edge that goes from A to B, and that defines the parent-child relationship. If there is a directed edge that goes from one vertex to a second one, then we say that the first vertex is the parent of the second, and vice versa, the second is a child of the first. So for example, C is also a child of A, and A is the parent of C. H, I, and J are all children of D, and of course D would be the parent of all three of those vertices. Likewise, F is a child of B, and B is the parent of F. Vertex A looks like it's related somehow to vertex F, but there's a generation gap here, so we're not going to say that A is the parent of F. Instead, we're going to say that A is an ancestor of F, and F is a descendant of A. Likewise, C is an ancestor of M, and M is a descendant of C. In another use of family terms, we say that vertices with the same parent are siblings of each other, brothers and sisters of each other. For example, in here, E and F are siblings, and so are H, I, and J. So here's a quick concept check to make sure you understand all this terminology. Here's a different tree that's partially labeled. Pause the video and answer the questions you see at the bottom of the screen. And when you think you're done, unpause and we'll debrief the answers. So in this new tree, the children of W are the vertices U and V. They are both children of the same parent, so that also makes them siblings, just like in real life, children of the same parent would be siblings. The descendants of W include all the children of W and all the grandchildren of W and all the others that are below it, so that would be U, V, S, R, T, and Z. Now back to the original tree. You might notice that there are several vertices on this tree that are the end of the line, so to speak, in the sense that they don't have any children of their own. That would be, in this case, E, K, L, M, H, I, and J. These vertices are special in that regard, and we switch from genealogical to botanical terminology and call these vertices leaves of the tree. So in general, a leaf of a tree is a vertex that has no children. A vertex that does have at least one child, we're going to call an internal vertex. That breaks with our use of cute terminology, and it makes sense because they're sort of inside the tree. If we go to any vertex in a tree, whether it's an internal vertex or a leaf, and look at all of its descendants, then we have what's called the subtree that has that vertex as its root. So for example, here I'm circling the subtree of my main tree that has C at its, as its root. So now it's time for another concept check. Go back to the tree we saw earlier and just visually identify all the leaves, all the internal vertices, and draw the subtree that has V as its root. Not all these vertices are labeled, so you can just mentally circle the leaves, the internal vertices, and the subtree that has V as its root. So pause the video and do that, and then come back when you're done. So the leaves on the tree are these, and I'll just circle them because they're not all labeled, like I said. The internal vertices are all the others. Anything that's not a leaf is going to be an internal vertex. And here is the subtree that has V as its root. So now we are finally ready to define what a binary tree is. A binary tree is simply a tree in which every internal vertex has no more than two children, hence the name binary. Since an internal vertex, by definition, has to have at least one child, otherwise it would be a leaf and not an internal vertex, that would mean that a binary tree is a tree in which every internal vertex has either one or two children, but no more and no less. 
So the first tree you looked at is not a binary tree because here's a vertex that has three children. But the second tree we looked at in the concept checks is a binary tree because again, every internal vertex has at least one child or two children, but no more. The leaves, of course, down here have no children. Now here's a further definition. A full binary tree is a binary tree in which every internal vertex has exactly two children. So this binary tree we saw earlier is binary, but it's not a full binary tree because right here we have an internal vertex with just one child. Here, on the other hand, is an example of a full binary tree where every vertex is either a leaf, and so it has no children at all, or it's an internal vertex with exactly two children, but no other kind of vertices exist. So one last thing about binary trees. Since every internal vertex in a binary tree has one or two children, but no more, then at every internal vertex, we can talk about its left child and its right child. And the left subtree, that would be the subtree that has the left child as its root, and the right subtree, that would be the subtree that has the right child as its root. For example, with this non-full binary tree, if we start at the root, here is the left child and here is the right child. And here is the left subtree at this vertex and here is the right subtree. So that's all for now, but we'll have more to say in terms of using binary trees to access data stored in them through what's called a traversal of that tree. Thanks for watching.